Good morning. 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 Good can we try it again? Yes. So God can hear it? Amen. Wow. Hallelujah. We had such an amazing time in worship. Yes. Such a breakthrough when he said the atmosphere is shifting Amen. now. Yes. It was a declaration. Amen. This whole week I've been hearing each and every one in this house speaking about the things that the Lord was telling them. And I was just in awe. You ever have the awe of God? Yeah. Really? The awe of God, the wonder, the amazement. You know, the one that makes your eyes shine. That glistering light. And as I heard that, each and every one was hearing from God. Oh, I, I'm not. I don't think you're understanding. <laughs> I don't even understand. Do you understand that there's a world that can't hear God? Yes. And we have been blessed and have a privilege to hear from God? Yes. We have a house that hears. Yes. I have a lantern here. It's as close as I can get to a lamp stand. It's a modern day, right? Right. If I wanted the original one, it would have been made out of clay. It would have been enough to fit my hand and put oil in it and just a wick. That's all they ever had for light. But now, here we are with Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. And I have so much light, all the light that I need. Father, oh God, you know all things, Lord. You know that this message is a message to corporate body, not just this house. It's for those who hear God. It's for those who can hear your voice. It's for those who are longing to know you, God. Not just another religious method of you, but those who are longing to know really who Jesus is. Oh, we've been presented, Lord, in this time from the day of the cross with so many different Jesus. And there was none that held the power you hold. Because the true Jesus is the one that's coming back for his church. It's the one who's coming after us in this hour. As the Lord has said, to our hearts right now to receive this seed. Even in a time of worship, God, when you said, break the chains. Holy Spirit, you reveal to me there's chains around our hearts. And so I begin to prophesy, Lord, break the chains of our heart. Break and undo things we've learned that were never to be taught. Come on, come on. Things we ate at tables we sat in, trusting and believing. That what we were eating was truly real. Because it tasted good. It sounded good. And we trusted the one feeding us. I thank you for Psalms 1 for revealing to me that we must be very careful at the seat of councils that we put ourselves in. And so Lord, I thank you for now. We're going to start in Revelation. Verse 12 and 20. This week when we were in prayer, uh, Tammy stated something about being in the book of Ruth. Brother Don stated we are in a famine of what? Of hearing the word. Of hearing the word. We're going to verse 12. I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And when I turned, I saw the seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks was one like the Son of Man, clothed with garment down to his feet, 
and a golden sash wrapped around his chest. When I heard this, I said, my God, you're in victory, Jesus. You got a golden sash. That reveals to me that all is complete. All right. So his hair on his head was white like wool, white as snow, and his eyes were like flames of fire. His feet were like fine brass and refined in the furnace. And his voice is like the sound of many waters. Do you know this, Jesus? Oh, do you know this, Jesus? The sound of many waters. The sound of many waters in my life, in every aspect of my life, the good and the bad. Do you know the sound of many waters? Oh, I read this and my heart is set on fire. He had in his right hand the seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. His appearance was like a sun shining brightly. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as if the heart was dead. Have you ever fell to his feet as if you were dead? As if there was nothing left in you? Or when you're dead and there's nothing left in you, whose feet do you run to? Because the Bible makes it clear. John says, I behold the Son of Man. And when I saw him in all his splendor and everything he was done with, I came and I dropped down like I was dead because there was nothing more left of me that I could give and pour into this majestic Jesus. There was nothing more. John living in a world just like ours, full of the same nonsense in the culture, full of the same nonsense that we go through even in the church, full of the same nonsense with the unbelievers. It was the same, but John had something different. Then he said, his right hand on me, saying, Do not be afraid, for I am the first and the last. I am he who lives, and though I was dead, look, I am alive forevermore. Amen, which means it is done. And I have the keys to hand to the death. I'm not sure what Jesus were looking at these things down which you have seen the things of which you are the things that which will take place after this the mysteries and he goes on in this prophetic vision with Jesus I don't want any vision I need a vision from the lamp himself come on come on come on in this part of revelation we're looking at the son of man the very son of man that was birthed through an actual woman Right. I'm sorry. Is everyone here? The old woman? Yes. Okay. So you too are a son or a daughter of someone. Yep. But here I'm looking at the Son of Man. Yes. Who is so amazing in his human way? The Son of Man. Jesus was fully God and fully man. You might know this. It's okay. We're going to go back into it. Because there's a, there's a point to all of this. Jesus doesn't just do things. He has meaning. He has purpose. He's going to bring something to life today. It's up to you if you want ears to hear. He was fully man, pre-existing God, and our human. he is our human high priest. Okay, everybody knows about a high priest? Do we honor and reverend the high priest? I know that when people come in with the most holiest anointing, my body quivers. And it's not because it's the person. It's because it's the one in them. They have had a revelation in them. And they walk around the earth with this anointing. Yeah. Yeah. 
son in this is an intimate union with the father it is the vision of a king of a priest the judge to his church it's the full length of his robe it's the gold sash that reveals his high priest and the ultimate one representing man to god and god to man oh do you understand you don't know what i went through last night it took all that was in me every sweat every nightmare to have to get up this morning because the devil's fighting this message yeah yeah Amen. because like i said it was corporate and this is what we tend we tend to get our minds all caught up in a box when the Lord releases things to the church, he's, but you better believe he's releasing it to other churches too. Yeah, yeah. Did I just say one stream comes out of the throne of God? Come on. Come on. Okay. So in this vision, we know he's king. He's king over the church. His white hair, blazing eyes indicate the wisdom, his dignity, the penetrating insight. You want to know something? Start carrying around the penetrating insight which is Jesus yeah. in verse 19 which we read you will find three things the things that John saw the things that are now messages to the church now is now things that will take place in the future events preceding the Christ coming that sounds good Let's go to Revelation chapter 2. Because the reason why the Lord led me to verse 1 is because you got to know the man. So you can kill your manly ways. If there's ever a better example to cut down your flesh, it's him. If there's ever a better way of someone who can understand the things we go through in this world, it's him. Because he came just like us. So that we can never say, Oh, well, Jesus, you were in this lifetime. Do you see what's happening? Jesus says, Well, why don't you look at my history? I was in the middle of a whole persecution. Do you see that there was no second chance in this nature? You either were going to die or you were hiding. Come on, come on. Yeah. Did you hear me? It's either you were going to die or you were going to stay hiding. Let's look at that in the spirit. It's either you're going to die already with all your things that hinder you from the fullness of Christ or you'll we'll stay in hiding. Revelations. We're going to 1 and 7. Here's the angel to the church of Ephesians. What I love the most is that he picked this month for our own people to study Ephesians. Have we read Ephesians? Oh my God, Simone, how many times do you go through the book of the Bible? Does it ever get old? No, it doesn't. And you, okay? <laughs> We're talking about a general who has gone through the whole Bible, back and forth looking for answers. Yeah. And it never gets old. That's right. Amen. Right. So here we are in Ephesians again. We've done Ephesians before. So we're back in Ephesians, and now guess what? I love the fact that he says, guess what? I'm going to talk about the church of Ephesians. I said, wow. But then I read it. He who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, says these things. I know your works. Oh, that's right. Oh, oh. Oh, I know your works, my beloved. Trust me, there's not one thing that doesn't pass by me that I do not acknowledge, good or bad. Your thoughts, yep. your ways, yep. the desires that are not mine, I know it all, beloved. There's nothing you can hide. Why do you choose not to bring those things to me? Okay. What does he say? I know your works. I know your labor. I know your patience. And that you cannot bear those things that are evil. And we, we are a house that says that. We just don't like the crooked things. We don't like injustice. That's right. That's he says, I know. And I love that you did that. 
And you have tested those who said that they were apostles, but were not, and have found them to be liars. Great job. You have endured. You've been patient. For my name's sake, you have labored and have not grown weary. But I have something against you. That you have abandoned your first love that you had at first. No stake for its place unless you repent. you're alone everybody's in the body is affecting all of us so we yes we know the grace that we're called into we know how to shift into first gear second gear third gear we know how to do church very well today you'll know if you've lost your first love because I'm going to reveal some scriptures to show you are you there because what's the point of coming here? If, if, if the lampstand is not the center of it all. I'm not, I, I, I'm not, listen, I have a really hard time being where Jesus isn't. A lot of people left church because of it. Because I don't feel the presence. And they would tell me, what's it going to take, sister? And I'm like, I don't know, I'm ready to go too. Come on, say. I know Jesus. Yes. Do I not? I know Jesus. Yeah. You can't bring me another Jesus. Because right. I will cast it out. I know Jesus. Yeah. Okay? And I don't need another Jesus presented to me to make me feel good about things that are not right with God. Or are we even reading? And he goes on to say, I'll take this candlestick if you don't repent, but this is what I have. You hate the works. Ah, okay. So here we go. Ephesians church speaks of a glorified Christ. Oh. So Ephesians church had all this going on, but didn't have the love of Christ. They didn't have that first love with Jesus. But they understood the glorified Christ? Wow. How tricky can the enemy be? Right. How tricky? First one, Jesus holds the stars. Those are the leaders in the church, in his hands. He signified that he is the one who tenderly helps us. And there's so many scriptures to back that up. One of my favorite ones is Isaiah. And I believe it was Isaiah 49 when he says, guess what? I opened up the palm of my hand and I found your name there. Amen. Amen. And I said, what? And he says, yeah, read it again. I know you've read the scripture before, but this time I want to show you something. Yeah. Listen to this. July 29th, actually May 30th of 19, Jesus says to me, comes up to me in the morning and says, hi. I want to tell you something. And I'm like, okay. Would you allow me to reintroduce myself to you? Wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. I said, you want to you wanna reintroduce yourself to me? To reintroduce yourself to me? Does anyone's husband say that? <laughs> <laughs> allow me to reintroduce my love to you? But allow me to reintroduce my love to you, please. I want to show you something. I want to show you who I really am. And I began this journey of just standing before Jesus with the lampstand. And I was going around it. And I was seeing Jesus in so many different lights. And I said, Lord, what are we preaching? Lord, what are we preaching? Verse 3, your labor affirmed your diligent work for standing for the truth by exposing the false teaching and compromise. Verse 4 talks about Jesus correcting them for losing their first love. For him, in the midst of their diligent ministry labors, 
They increased their workload, but decreased their love for Jesus. The only way to work in ministry is through the flow of love. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So if you already have a problem where you're not in love with Jesus, then you can actually see why you're so agitated when it comes to helping one another. I'll prove it. Scripture. Okay? I'm going to prove it. Five, falling away from your fervent love they once had for Jesus. And six, you know, this guy was a deacon in the book of Acts. Who had followers who fell into the error by distorting the doctrine of grace and teaching that allow a low standard of morals and ethics. Why? Because Jesus says, I've done it all, so everything I ask of you is you're able. You're able. You're able. You're able to do exceedingly and abundantly more because I am the one. I am the one. So they put the morals and standards down. And here we have these followers talking about the gospel and was distorting the grace of God even then. And it trickled all the way down the line into our paths. And why? Because. Did we ever think to speak that we need to have Jesus all the time in his presence? So, what is do the works? Ephesians chapter 4, 17. You got me out there? Oh. This I say, therefore, and testify the Lord that ye have for to walk not as Gentiles walk, but in the vanity of their mind. Can I get a different scripture up there? Like um, New King James Version, please. I don't like something like King Arthur. <laughs> okay, so here we are. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. For he is our peak. Oh, I'm sorry, we're on 17. 17. 17 irons. Okay. And he came and he preached peace to you. Am I in the right one? No, Lord. Here we go. Okay. Right one. The old life and the new life. So therefore I say to you and testify in the Lord that from now on you walk not as Gentiles. Right. Amen. Where Gentiles walk in the vanity of their minds, having their understanding darkened, excluded from the life of God. Though the ignorance that is written to them do the hardness of the heart, being callous that they have given themselves over to sensuality for the practice of every kind of impurity with greediness. This is what happens when the lampstand is removed. Hardness of heart. That's why you can't feel it. There's a callous. What do we do with calluses? We remove it. We don't sit in it. You don't, it's uncomfortable. You have to remove the callus. It has to be soft. Verse 5, still in Ephesians, 1 to 5. Look at this. I love this. I said, really? Oh, one more time. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. Just really quick because it hit my eye. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, in whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, 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 let all bitterness be rooted out. But he says, wrath and anger, outbursts and blasphemies and all malice be taken away from you and be kind to one another yes. tender hearted how can you be tender hearted with someone when you're so cast yes. be tender hearted forgiving one another just as God in Christ forgave you and Amen. therefore Amen. be imitators of God oh not imitator of me 
Oh, I shouldn't build the best version of me? No. The Bible doesn't say you're going to build the best version of you. I'm so, okay, I'm going to remove some motivational inspirations that were imparted into the church. He didn't say, I want you to be the best version of you. He said, I want you to be an imitator of me. You need to be like an imitator of God. We got to remove it. These are things that trickle in. Oh, oh, so all this stuff that I'm doing, oh, wonder. It has no effect. Okay. Imitators. Walk in love as Christ loved us. Give himself for us as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. Do you know that there are people that are so saturated with Jesus that they smell like a rare flower? And I ask, do you have perfume on? That's rare. She's like, no, just came out from being with Jesus. And I'm like, man, that scripture's so real. You can smell like the fragrance of heaven if you want to. Yeah. Oh, we're, we're watching. Okay, let's get somewhere. Watch this one. So we know that the work is that we are supposed to have temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness, and true love that occupies. First love ruins that. When you don't have first love, it ruins this. Amen. Because see, it was never you that was crucified on the cross. And it was never you that was chosen to glorify God. It was Jesus Christ. So therefore, when I start doing things out of my own ability, I become bitter. I have wrath. I have vengeance. I have something to say. And everything I'm doing doesn't do anything. Come on. Nothing. It's an emptiness of darkness. Because the lamp, if the lamp's not here, in he in me, your words are so filthy. Your opinions are disgusting. And we can smell it. You know why? Because we're imitators of God and God can smell it. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 17 says, Dear, therefore, dear friends, since you know this in advance, be on guard, so that you are not led away by the error of lawless people and fall from your own stable position. What's my stable position? It was at the moment I fell in love. It was the moment I fell in love with him. It was that moment that got me to the altar, that brought me into salvation. It was that moment. That's what I should have stored. That's what I should have held on to. What made me lose grip on my first love? You. The enemy has been declawed. He's so easy to whisper. And that's all he has to do. Do you know I have a vision of the of the God of the, uh, the, the stronghold, Mammon? And God shows me. All Mammon does is sit on his throne. And people drive to him. Drive. And your shirt will go around him. He has to do nothing. He does nothing. And so the so the Lord revealed. Most of the time Satan's not doing anything. Your worst enemy is you. So if you're gonna guard yourself. And never came out of that place. You would have had a stable position. Second Peter chapter 13, 22. Balaam used his position for personal honor, material gain at the expense of who? God's people. We've had that too. We've had that too. We've had that teaching trickle in somewhere. Because that's when you start thinking, I need to be, you know, and listen, ministry is not all it's cut out to be. Right. I'm sorry. When I'm glad, when I'm in the nightmares and I'm going through all this stuff, I'll be graced for it. Because yes. if not, I would have been done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you understand? Yes. And the only reason he graces you is because you've been stable in your position. Yeah. I'm not up here because I won the war. I'm up here because he trusted me. Amen. 
Because I went through the fire. Because I fought to keep the light on. When everything around me was looking as dark as it could. And I couldn't even hold the light up anymore. And I said, God, I'm done with this light. What am I to do? He says, you stand. You stand like Moses. You don't go weary. And doing good. Yes. Your children are where they are. Yes. Your husband is where he is. Yes. Your parents are where they are. But guess what? That is not what I see in my dominion. Woo! Come on now. Come on. And everything that's in me, trust me, wants to do it into me. Put it in order. I want to tell you what the word says and what you need to be doing. But that's not what God allows me to do. Amen. He says, no. You shine the light of my son into this situation. Shine the light. And tell my of my son into that situation. And try to your best to submit that flesh. Because that's the testing. It's the moment of trying to regress me back into a place where I'm not stable. All right, come on. Do you hear me? Come on. I don't need to be stable in finances. I can be unstable in my mind, and you won't even know it. <laughs> because I've been good enough to know how to carry it. Have we been good enough to know how to carry him? Yeah. We've forgotten that it is spiritualized. It's spirit first. That's why the Bible says, seek the kingdom first. Yes, right. Don't seek friends. Come on. Don't seek I advice. Like I that. said, Tell seek it. and trust me. Yeah. I've been one to call somebody and say, hey, SOS. Tell it, tell it. And they'll never respond. Come on. And I know why God did that. Because what I am doing for you, only I will get the glory. Yeah. No man will have my glory. And it's been hard. It's hard not having someone. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about physical. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, when I'm with him, come on. It don't matter. Come on. Come on. What you say like that? Come on. Come on. You know why he does those things? Come on. So you stop depending. You need to stop being come a whole dependent. Yeah. You need to stop being dependent yeah. on Jesus. Everybody in what I'm doing. Yeah. I know we're weak. I know we're hurting. I know it hurts. I know the battle you're going through, but I'm trying to show you something. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Right. Listen, he is a gentleman. Yeah. Yes. One thing I found out is that he's a gentleman. Yes, he is. And God doesn't push me. He blows wind behind me to get me to move, right. but he doesn't push me. <laughs> Come on. He'll correct me. Yeah. Sometimes firm, yeah. sometimes soft. But every time it ever came through, it came in with a wind of love. Amen. You gotta know this Jesus. I promise you, if you would get to know this Jesus, all those emotions you've gone through that are disgustingly in founding your character that is not allowing you to evangelize or save souls. That's what it's keeping you from. It's keeping you from the real ministry. Right. Let me talk to you about this lampstand and we'll be wrapping it up. This lampstand were one of the most sacred religious objects and it had an important role in worship to Yahweh. Amen. In the prophetic visions, lampstand serves as a symbol of people connecting with God and the anticipation of his full light shining upon them. Do you hear me? It wasn't a prophetic vision. It was God calling them to connect with him. Amen. When you start seeing lampstands and you start seeing God keep talking about oil, anointing, and all that, it's because he's saying, hello, I need to see you. We need to connect. In the Hebrew last land, it was the menorah. And it occurred over 42 times. But guess how it occurs, guys? In joy. Did you lose your joy? Did you lose your joy? 
Because you might have misplaced your menorah. In the Old Testament, it refers to the tabernacle, the temple, the priestly function, and prophetic visions of restoration. In the New Testament, there was 12 times the Greek word. And he took, goes on to say how it was actually, he's really figuratively speaking about the light of God in the New Testament. He's speaking about the light of Christ. The lanterns were used across ancient Egypt in sanctuaries as well as burial grounds. Oh, I'm sorry, we need a light for the dead? Jesus. Oh, I, I'm talking in the spirit. Yes, we need a light for the dead. Yeah. It's a burial. In the tabernacle, it was the reminder of the brightness of God who presents and active among his people. So in the tabernacle, which Jesus is God's tabernacle. Yes. Yes. Okay. He said, they're so bright. It's so bright, and I need to connect with my people. I need them active in me. In the Solomon's temple, it says that there was ten lampstands, five on the left and five on the right. But what I love the most, it says that this five, this five, for some reason we're following the inner sanctuary. Now we know the inner sanctuary is like the holies of holies. This was God first saying, remember what I've done. It talks about the acts God created. In Solomon's temple. Oh, I'm sorry, we're back in Genesis. Well, did you know that in Genesis it says that I've given you dominion over what? Oh, the earth. Oh, thank you. I've given you dominion. Now go. Multiply. Okay. What did Jesus say? When he told the disciples, Go. Therefore, make disciples. He was reinstating Genesis. Because you already got your dominion back. You got your authority back. Why? Because I'm here. I've done it all. Zachariah, the golden lampstand with the seven lamps, is the representation of the word of God. When he says in that scripture, he says, Oh Lord, it's not by might, not by power. But by your spirit, God. Oh, so it's not by my striving. It's not by what I do. But it's by your spirit, Lord. So we sing it. But are we hearing it? Even this morning, I was so happy with Reggie when he played that song. Because I said, we're making a decree. We will shift our minds today. Yes. We will shift our hearts today. To remove the lampstand in verse 5, look at this. One must forfeit. One must forfeit the right to shed light of Jesus to the world. They have to disqualify themselves. Yeah. Oh, brother. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Preach it. Preach it. forfeit. You're forfeiting. So if I come to you in your first love movement, you took it. But then all this stuff happened. So all this stuff happened. Just put it down because you need time to breathe. Put it down. You need time to breathe. Okay, guess what? You got used to living in this atmosphere now without him. So she's forfeit. So I'm going to tell you what happens in your forehead. She just forfeited the right to shed the light of Jesus to the world, disqualifying herself from shedding the light of life. God will remove any, he will remove the church or the congregation from its place and destiny in God's kingdom. If you have lost the passion, the purpose of God, and have not repented and came into a time of refreshing with him, which is the word that the Lord was giving you this morning. Because the Bible says just repent. Say it okay, God, I did it. I'm found guilty, Lord. Guilty, yes. The, the accuser found me out. Yeah. And he told you not. And you've been coming at me with, hello, you got this religious thing going on, but you don't have this love thing going on. Yes, that's right. Jesus. Jesus. And Satan keeps coming to me night and day talking about all this stuff, and I'm trying to prove him wrong. Jesus. 
Can I tell you that it's true? That God will do that? Please, please. The, 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 what, the, the thing that gets me the most, and we can battle out the scripture. When people say, once saved, don't saved. I'm going to tell you something. Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom, but only by the ones who does the will of my Father in heaven. But did you know that that scripture also says, but Lord, did I not prophesy? Lord, did I not do ministry? But Lord, did I not raise the sick? Did I not heal the sick? Did I not cast out devils? And Jesus says, away. Away. I don't know you. But yet, somewhere this person was found in the, in the congregation, in the church, somewhere. Come to church. And they did all the works. And Jesus literally says in red letters, I don't know you. Jesus. Find out way too late. Because at that moment, they're before Jesus. Well, how the way will Jesus say, I don't know you? There had to be a moment when these people went to him and said, Hi, God, we did it all. Oh, yeah. It's like, who are you? I don't see my son. I don't see my son. When the lampstand is removed, guys, I'm going to go into this last part. You need the anointing. Who is your anointing? See, because in here, I gotta put on the oil and then I gotta turn this up. Yeah. And then as far as I turn it up, my light lights yeah. as far as I want it. So the oil's gotta go in here. There's gotta be a deposit. Yeah. So he deposits this oil and I turn the light as much as I need. Yeah. See, he wants it all the way up. But I like to just say, maybe this time I'll need a little. Maybe this time I'll need a little. Maybe, and that could be why, because the anointing flows in different ways. See, I'm flowing in a different anointing today. Yeah. The anointing flows in different ways. Now, the anointing was used for what? For purification. Sometimes it was used to anoint my weapon. Listen, it's all there. Times is used to treat my wounds. To treat my wounds. To cure my diseases. Do you know that he puts an obligation in you when he gives you the anointing? And then he places an honor upon you? Do you think honor just is everybody's going to come in and start bowing down to you because they know that you have this obligation and they can feel the anointing and they place honor? No. The anointing is what draws people to honor you. Yeah. Nothing I can say, not by my words, nothing, not even my mind. If I don't have the anointing, then guess what? The anointing is your protection. Yes. The anointing is what the host marks you with when he says, you, my child, I care for. I love that. When he said, Jesus comes and says, I anoint you because I care for you. And because I care for you, I got you and I am going to protect you. They use the anointing to cast out devils. They use anointings to cast out to do healings. And the disciples of the elders of the church were always accompanied with anointing oil that took place when they preach and when they pray. Preach and pray. And guess what? When that happened, there was visible signs of what? All the wonders. Because there was purity. There was no, there was none, nothing found in the heart. It was pure. It was like, you know, you got to get into a place where you're like, God, I don't care. I don't care if I ever do anything. But one thing I do care about, don't take your presence from me. Yes. 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 God, don't take your presence from me. God, I'm okay if I never serve. I'm okay if I never have to do a thing, God. But your presence has got to be with me. Yes. 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 I'm not alive without you. Come on. Come on. I was dead. Come on. Yes. When you came, you changed my world. Yes. Yeah. I've been a witness for my children. I get to do deliverances over them. Do you hear what the Lord is saying? He gives you, He equips you, and then He sends you, but you can't go without the light. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
what I was talking about? Oh, Jesus loved going in there and just poking it up. You know? And it was just to, it was just to say, guys, you have the word. I just want you to have a presence. Yeah. That's what he was saying. You have the word. I just want you to have a presence. Yeah. But they didn't want him. They didn't want the Messiah. They were good. We're putting jokes around people and making it heavy for them to come to church. It was good to rope them as an ox and have them sitting here with all this weight. As long as you're here, I'm okay. No. It was a custom. And I'll tell you the anointing. The anointing is where your joy is. The fragrance of Christ. If you read Luke 7.38, can we just give me that one, please? Because everyone loves this one, too. I know they do. Did you give it to me? 7.38. Ah. Oh. And then, he stood at his feet and behind him, weeping, she began to wash his feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. And she kissed his feet and she anointed them with a fragrant oil. Are you this woman? Are you the servant? Are you? Do you cry at his feet because you miss him? Do you cry at his feet because you're homesick? Do you even experience what love sick means? Because this is this woman came in, a sinner. That full sinner. Didn't have the word. But she comes in. Who is this man that says he's this and that and he lets this, this profanity happen? You know why he did this? Because those who know the word know the custom. Can, I, can we say that again? Those who knew the word knew the custom. They know tradition. They know how to come in and step things in order to make it right. No one will never notice that I don't have my life. But we do. Because it's in the heart. Amen. It's in the heart. And we all can hear the conditions of hearts. The Jewish custom was to anoint the head of a guest. Jesus tells the Pharisee that they failed to show him honor. And now has to watch Jesus receive it out of the hands of a humble woman full of sin. They must have named everything in the book about her. They must have called her all types of names. And here she weeps from his presence. And she kisses him. And she's like, I have anything else to give. I don't have anything else to give. But I got this fine oil. And it's from my place of intimacy. And I only have this much. And it's precious and I know if I spend it, it's all I'm going to have. And she gets to this place and sees that there's a, this man who's oh, so worthy of it. <coughs> He's so worthy of it. And she knows that when she walks in, everybody's going to talk about her. You know, they're all going to know about me, my ways, and all the things I do. My The whole town knows me. You ever have one of those in your town that you're like, we know this one, and we don't want to do anything with them? We kind of just hand them over to Satan. The Bible says hand them over to Satan. But you were hurt in the love of Jesus. Jesus didn't do that. Jesus went to them. Guys, Jesus went to them and he sat at the table of many different people and he said, do you know who I am? 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 Over and over again, even to the disciples, do you know who I am? Who did they say I am? You know there was only one disciple that had it right? He said only God could have gave you that revelation. Not man. Only God can give you that revelation of who I am. Jesus comes up with 150 titles. 
None of them have my name. I looked. Is it anywhere in there? No, of course you know I'm being sarcastic. There's a reason why I said that. Because all those names is who I am to me. I am supposed to bring the great I am. I am supposed to bring the Messiah. I'm supposed to bring the Redeemer. I'm supposed to bring all 50 titles to people. But I can't do that in my heart. If my heart it doesn't want to. That's the callous. If you've misplaced your last stand. Come up and start playing, please. Everybody move. <laughs> Someone come, please. <laughs> you don't even have to come up if you don't want to. I'm okay with that because this is between you and Jesus. But some people need help. Just like the doctors help women to give birth. Can't give birth alone. You can't give birth alone. Even midwives, when there weren't doctors in the room, there's a midwife. We need to start having some more midwives. Father, we just thank you for this word. We thank you, Lord, that the call that you are releasing corporately was to return to me. You're crying out, return to me. Turn from all things and just turn to me. Return to me. You're looking for first love again. You're looking for your bride. You're looking for the bride. Is anybody willing to be back in the chambers with him? Are we even ready to come back into the chambers with him? It's a simple, God, forgive me, refresh me. I'm sorry. Lord, have your way. Touch hearts now. God, only you can do this by your spirit. Lord, I'm buying the chains of our heart. Release us from callous. Release us from the callousness of our heart. Oh, Lord, a new and restored pure joy is not one made up. God, that you will restore true love and not one made up. I don't want to pretend to love you. I want to pretend I have joy. I want to truly love and truly have joy. 